What's up guys, John here and welcome back to John Moon Studios. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can transfer over your sample libraries from one project to another in order to keep the same color palette you did in the previous project. So let's get right to it. Let's assume you started a new project and you want to continue using the same sounds you used in a previous project because it's a continuation of a film you're working on or let's say an album that you're working on and you want to make sure that you keep the same exact sounds that you had from the previous session. So instead of having to load up all of the sample libraries one by one, and let's say you had over 20 or 30 different sample libraries that you use, we're going to see how we can actually import them from a different project into a new project and not have to worry about finding the sounds again. So the way we do this is we go to file, we go to where it says import, and we go to where it says tracks from project. The window is going to come up where you can actually choose the Cubase project that you had your color palette on. And we're going to go ahead and click as if we were going to open this Cubase project. So I'm going to use this trailer queue that I was working on. And I want to get the sounds exactly how it came from this project. So I'm going to go ahead and double click this. And it's going to prompt me with this window. So this, this is the import option window. So here's a couple things that you need to know about this window. So you can select the events and parts. So these are the parts here. You could do the channel and inspector settings and any automation that you had in those channels as well. It tells you where it comes from, the file name, the sample rate, frame rate, if you're working with film and the project start time. And then you have the active project, which is the one I'm working on now. It's called untitled because I haven't saved it 4823 and then it has this time code. But right now the project start time doesn't really matter and the frame rate doesn't really matter because I don't have any film here. So we could just see that the sample rate is what matches here. So in the import position, you have three options. So you can import these as the absolute position. So if we hover over, it says that the parts are inserted at their original time code position. We have import at relative position, which is insert it at the original position relative to the project start time. And then we have what we call cursor position, which is wherever your cursor is inside of Cubase at the moment, it's going to go ahead and upload all of the parts according to your cursor position. So right now it's at bar 22, so it'll copy it from there. So let's go ahead and just put import at cursor position. And then if you have any media files, you can actually copy them straight into this product as well. In this case, I'm not going to do any media files. I'm just going to go ahead and click all the instrument tracks and I want them imported with their parts inside of this Cubase project. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight all of my MIDI tracks or instrument tracks rather. And then I'm going to go ahead and select OK. So as you can see, the entire session of my trailer queue has been imported with exact positions and exact sounds that I use for that other project. So now my color palette is exactly the same as my other project. And in case I wanted to work on, let's say I just wanted to get a violin part or a specific part from the previous project. As you can see, all of the parts have imported here. It took a little bit for it to load because of course it needs to gather all of that MIDI information as well as the sample library information. But if I go ahead and click, let's say on just any of these French horns, open up this sample library. Let me go ahead and drag the screen. So as you can see, I opened up my French horns and it's going ahead and loading it into RAM. And as you can see, I now have my French horn patch that I used for that previous cue in there. And again, you can open up any other one and it'll go ahead and show up the same. So these are my Tycho Swell shorts and it's imported into this project. So let's say I don't want to have all of these MIDI events kind of pop up and I just want the sound. So let me just go ahead and delete all these MIDI events and then just go ahead and delete all of my tracks here. So let's say I want to import my sounds again. I just go to import tracks from project and then I'm going to go ahead and click the same track. But this time I don't want events and parts. I want to take that off and I don't want any automation either. I'm going to go ahead and grab my sample libraries again. And then I'm going to import at cursor position, which at this point it really doesn't matter, but I'll leave it at that point because all it's going to do is transfer over the instrument tracks that I've selected here. So let's go ahead and click OK. 
And as you can see, my sample library is loaded up again. And of course, since I need to wait till they load up, but let's go ahead and just open up a piano, the piano sound I have here on Keyscape. And here it is, here's my piano patch. And if I need to play it, and it's also dialed in with the same amount of reverb that I had before, you know, the release and pedal noise down, all of the tweaks I did inside of the sample libraries are also saved. So that's the really cool part of doing this. You don't have to reset your sounds and then dial in or try to find the tones either. It comes imported with all of the settings you had within the sample libraries and just transfer them perfectly into your new session. If you have any questions throughout the video, just go ahead and drop your comments down below and I'll get to them as soon as possible. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the ring button so you don't miss any of my weekly videos. Also, don't forget to check out the John Moon Studios store. I have a variety of merch with the official John Moon Studios logo on it. So go ahead and check it out. And as always, don't forget to share with your musician friends. I'll see you guys soon.